So uh, what we should do is rely on a qualified master, a good uh, spiritual master, and he will uh, show us what is it, this uh, suffering that we do not wish, and we will be able to recognize this suffering, this unwanted suffering. And then as we search for methods uh, to see if it's possible to abandon this unwanted suffering or not, we will find that the, there is an antidote, there is a, a directly opposing antidote to this suffering, and that this is called the Dharma. So if we can identify the Dharma properly, we can understand what is um, Dharma really, then we will see that it is the best tool to get rid of the suffering that we strive to abandon. And then when we understand that it is possible to get rid of this suffering, then we generate a very strong interest uh, to engage in this Dharma. When we see the possibility of a state completely free from all suffering, then we generate very strong interest to apply the um, efficient antidote. And then naturally, we will just want to make time to do that. We will want to only do that. So then we will meditate on, on this antidote, cultivated habit, uh, again and again, continuously. And then we will see it for ourselves and, and for everyone that all these uh, unwanted sufferings come um, because of a mistaken mind. And um, we would want to change and transform this mistaken mind, which is so negative, which is the cause of suffering. And when we are able to recognize this uh, mistaken wrong mind as, uh, as being a wrong mind, as what it is, this, uh, this wisdom, being an unmistaken mind, naturally increases. And then again, when we look around and see how sentient beings around us are affected uh, by this unmistaken wrong mind, uh, how we see that it's, uh, this mind um, forces them to undergo uh, so many kinds of sufferings and, uh, and pain, then um, uh, we feel the real compassion. So, I think it's very important to start with identifying the uh, sufferings and especially to understand the three types of suffering. Uh, the suffering of suffering, the suffering of change, and the uh, compounding of pervasive uh, suffering. And then especially uh, the third one is very important to understand. Uh, when we recognize it, this compounding uh, all pervasive suffering, we can see that this I uh, that we consider as so precious continuously all the time, this um, aggregate uh, of flesh and bones that is just uh, compounded due to common afflictions that is just uh, uh, propelled by causes of suffering and itself becoming the cause of suffering, we see that everything that it, this, uh, these aggregates use is um, kind of unreliable. And these physical aggregates, we don't have so much like expectations or so much fear with regard to these uh, aggregates that we have. And if we understand like the, the true nature of these aggregates, then uh, naturally, because they are those that are used, the user, the being uh, itself, uh, being under the sway of the delusions, 
we are not so surprised to understand, to see how it is just in the nature of suffering also. Tell me, this is your mother's 
And when you see that there is a possibility of liberation, or maybe you will start finding out that there are higher states of existence, or higher states of uh, happiness, such as you know, uh, some kind of divine uh, realm or some kind of um, uh, pure land and things like this. Maybe you will uh, see that they are better than mm, normal samsaric existence. But still, uh, you will understand that even in pure lands, etc., still, as long as you are under the sway of self grasping ignorance, uh, as long as the self-grasping ignorance is um, uh, kind of uh, holding on your thoughts and um, associated with all the causes and conditions that you will engage in, then uh, this ignorance will um, act as a cause of suffering. And will, um, you will see that even if you find uh, temporary happiness there, it is associated with this ignorance. And therefore, automatically, this happiness will transform and will come to exhaustion. And then it will be the end of it, and you'll have to uh, you know, continue so in a samsaric suffering. So then you will try to find uh, uh, if there's a possibility of getting to a way that is transcending all of these kinds of uh, sufferings. You will wonder, is it possible to find a state of fearless happiness, a state of omniscience, uh, Buddhahood? Um, how uh, would that be? And is it possible for anyone to just uh, work their way uh, up to this state? And if it is uh, possible, then you will want to get rid of the self-grasping uh, ignorance. So first, you will see that if you merely get rid of the self-grasping ignorance, what the state that you will reach is mere uh, liberation from samsara. So you yourself are free from psychic existence. But when you look around, you will see that all other sentient beings are exactly like me. They don't want to suffer. They just want to be happy but they continuously engage in accumulating the causes for suffering and continuously uh, destroy the causes for their own happiness by ignoring the, the respective causes. And when you look at that and you observe that, you feel how this is absolutely terrible and this triggers a, the, automatically a, a very strong sense of compassion that you cannot even help how this tremendous sense of compassion towards those sentient beings. And when you see they, even though they want to get rid of suffering and they just want to be happy, they continuously engage in the causes that will give rise to their own suffering. You feel how terrible this is and this tremendous compassion arises in your heart. So then when you look at them, you feel not only just myself needs to be free from and the suffering of samsara is to find liberation, but all of them also should be free from these sufferings. And you feel, may I you know, protect them from these sufferings? May I save them from those sufferings? And then you generate uh, love and compassion. Actually, the, the best way you can generate a very strong love and compassion towards all sentient beings is by seeing in them, in every one of, uh, of them, the uh, Buddha seed, the potential to become enlightened that we call the Tathagata Gata. And when you see that even though they have this potential to reach their highest stage of enlightenment, because um, of ignorance, they still engage um, deliberately in not achieving this, but uh, they're all suffering, overwhelmed by compassion. Uh, you cannot even help it. And when you see what kind of a confusion they're in, uh, not finding their own happiness, you feel how terrible this is. How terrible it is that they, they, they engage in this, <coughs> and the way they lead their lives is completely, um, hmm, there's a great gap, a great discrepancy between how things appear and things really are, and you feel 
how terrible this is, that they cannot, uh, that they do not understand how to abandon the causes of suffering, that they do not see uh, how to cultivate the causes of happiness, and they are like a blind people running around, or like ants running around, not knowing um, what to do to find what they really want. When you see this state of things, observing other state of things, you feel compelled by compassion overwhelming you. And then the, the compassion that you have is not just uh, feeling uh, this kind of uh, um, feeling of pity or some kind of tiny compassion that you will feel just, you know, for some cute cats and cute dogs or like very poor or sick people. Uh, all this, uh, it would not just be focused on those things that you see with your eyes, but your compassion will be able to encompass all sentient beings as long as they're afflict afflicted by the three delusions, as long as they um, indulge and accomplish the causes uh, of suffering by going under the sway of the uh, delusions, you will uh, generate compassion towards all of them, even those who temporarily have maybe um, some kind of uh, temporary happiness, even those who are very wealthy, even those who are very famous, etc., you will still um, see, uh, see them with compassion. And you will see that all these good things that they enjoy now comes through merit. And through this enjoyment, actually, their merit is exhausted in a very stupid, insignificant way. So um, you feel uh, this compassion encompasses everyone. So when you see what, it, what are the actual causes for stable, fearless happiness, what are the reasons why it is possible to find this um, stable happiness, uh, you can generate compassion. If you do not see that, then with your compassion will not encompass everyone. Then, mm, so, it is not the case that liberation is something out there and it has nothing to do with us right now or the samsaric state right now. Otherwise, as sentient beings, we would not be able to achieve even the cause for achieving uh, nirvana, liberation. It is not the case that uh, samsara is on one side and nirvana is completely elsewhere, uh, unrelated. It's actually just uh, the confused mind of sentient beings that creates a uh, samsara. Uh, and it, be it is because of this uh, discrepancy between appearances and, uh, the and reality, and all these actions that are um, triggered by this uh, discrepancy in the minds of sentient beings between what appears and um, the way things exist, all these uh, actions then just create suffering and create uh, samsara for sentient beings. But when you see that this very mind that we have, when we see how it is uh, devoid of production, uh, cessation, and abiding, uh, then you will find uh, nirvana. And as long as you do not see that, will, this mind will be samsara. And when you reach to this type of mind, which is devoid of these three, uh, production, um, cessation, and abiding, then you will reach the state that is gone beyond a suffering. So it's not like these two are completely separate. Number 
Dini, Chanjuki Simsa, Tawas of Jewels of Moka, Dini, don't you dee? Dini read us. Dini did never change the touch of the Chiwaina, and the one number, and the chicken it was made of us. So if we want to be a good Buddhist, if we want to be a qualified Buddhist, then we have to see the self-grasping ignorance or the grasping at true existence or at uh, the, um, the uh, self-cherishing attitude as poison, as the real enemy. And when we see that, then uh, we will use the contradictory factors uh, which are uh, the wisdom of selflessness and bodhicitta to we will try to generate them to uh, stop these uh, two negative mindsets of self-grasping and self-cherishing attitude, which are the actual demons uh, which prevent um, the, the, the generation, the development of the perfect view and the pure conduct. So if we really sincerely try to destroy those two self-grasping and self-cherishing attitude, we become a real Buddhist. So when we talk about this wisdom of selflessness, it's not uh, something easy, something so easily accessible. So we have to um, generate it by um, uh, understanding the different degrees of certainty of turbulent origination. See what is the true mode of abiding of phenomena. See what is reality, actually. And this has to be based on reasoning. We should understand why it is like this and like that. And then um, when we, if we realize these different degrees of dependent origination, then we will come to understand um, the true mode of abiding of different phenomena, the different objects of knowledge. And we will see that they are not established by way of their own nature. They are not established inherently. They are merely uh, established uh, due to uh, contact, uh, between mutual contact between each other, or uh, relativity, <coughs> and relying upon each other, or just depending upon each other. And that's how uh, they come into existence. So in this way, when we take to mind the uh, voidness of phenomena, uh, automatically the, their interdependence will appear. And when we take to mind their interdependence, automatically we will reach out to their voidness of inherent existence. Otherwise, if uh, when we think about uh, emptiness or voidness, we, mm, the uh, meaning of interdependence just gets uh, lost, just gets uh, disappeared, then we even uh, lose track of uh, relative, uh, relative things, the relative positivity and negativity, the, the, what it would be good and bad, relatively. This also completely disappears, and then it becomes 
just a complete absence, and this is what we call babyism. This is not um, actual the actual view. Uh, the actual view is found when uh, the uh, meaning of emptiness points to the meaning of interdependence, and when the meaning of interdependence points to the meaning of voidness. And uh, we should get to this uh, extremely uh, precious understanding by relying on a perfectly qualified spiritual master. And then in this way, when we have found such an understanding, uh, our own uh, attachment, all our delusions, our own attachment, anger, ignorance, etc., all these um, states of mind that we have that are based on this uh, discrepancy between appearances and reality will slowly, slowly decrease and then everything that we do will naturally become dharma, everything that we do will naturally become virtuous, whether we are uh, walking, sitting, eating, talking, whatever we do, will all become imbued with virtue. Hey, in the name, this is the Jigazo de Jiba Mira Mares. This is my answer. So, show me the channel. She did. 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 So this is not unrelated to us. Some of you might feel, she's just talking nonsense. Um, this has nothing to do with my problems. <laughs> but actually, I feel that it's deeply, uh, these explanations are deeply related to each and every of our problems and hardship, because I feel this is the best tool uh, to destroy these hardships. For example, if you want to uh, cut a tree, uh, there's a big difference if you cut this tree with a very uh, sharp saw, or if you try to uh, cut the tree with a tiny leg clipper. <laughs> so, when you try to cut the tree, so this thing you know for sure that the tree, this tree you need to cut it, but you don't, you don't really know how to go about cutting it, so you don't know what means you have to apply to cut it. So you just feel, I absolutely have to cut the tree. So, but you have, you don't have the proper tool. You don't know what, which is the most like efficient tool to cut the tree. So you you come up with this tiny knife, nail clipper that is even not even sharp. And then instead of the tree uh, being cut, you end up exhausted yourself. <laughs> So I think it, it seems it's very important to recognize ignorance. Because it pervades all the different illusions that we have to abandon. So, because if we uproot the tree, get rid of the, the root of the tree, then uh, we do not need to worry about uh, taking care of the branches and the leaves and, and, and the different things. They will just naturally just dry up or die out. So, um, if we want to get rid of all our problems, I think we want to you, we should get rid of the root of the problem, and then all the daily, you know. Uh, troubles and problems will naturally just be destroyed. So this, um, this what we call logics uh, to find uh, valid um, experience 
I think the more we have this experience of logic, so that we can use this logic, the more we can use it, the more we find we can understand uh, what is good, what is bad, and we can uh, reach out in, in a way that is extremely uh, deep and extremely vast. So we all really like uh, taking apartments and meditating on the deity, right? So when we uh, do that, when we want to meditate on the deity, uh, actually what happens is that we should uh, meditate on the deity, which is the uh, appearance of the mind uh, itself that realizes emptiness. So when we do that, meditate on the deity, which is the mere appearance of the mind realizing emptiness, this is extremely precious and extremely efficient, extremely powerful uh, meditation. And it is sure, 100%, that on the um, uh, <laughs> it is sure that this will only give rise to extremely powerful and uh, virtuous results. But then if we cannot meditate on the deity uh, by uh, uh, arising uh, the deity from the, the, the awareness that realizes emptiness, then how complicated to meditate on the deity, right? We don't even know whether it is virtuous or uh, not virtuous. This is not even sure. It is not even sure whether uh, this is a Buddhist practice or not. So when we uh, do the deity yoga, actually the deity is of the essence of the uh, realization of emptiness and compassion. <laughs> so let's not go into that because I don't really know how to explain that and you don't know how to listen to this anyway. <laughs> So there is a Tibetan saying about this. It says that if the fox tries to jump where how the in the way the tiger jumps, it will end up breaking its back. So with regard to secret mantra and the unique features of secret mantra, particularly the Anuttara Yoga Tantra, um, then uh, it's, uh, it's very difficult. So let's not explain you know, the different features of Anuttara Yoga Tantra and what is the uh, Tathagata Gaba according to this. <laughs> Is that if we want to truly practice the Dharma, we should strive to generate place that is based on understanding. Otherwise, uh, we just go on taking empowerment, maybe we take Vashwagini empowerment, or maybe we take Hayagubha empowerment, or um, other deities. So we take this empowerment, and then we have all these uh, commitments, 
It's like we have to do the nearing retreat, um, so we absolutely have to do it because it's the order of the group. And if we don't do it, then it's not okay. But if we do it, we don't know how to do it. So then we sit there and we have to meditate on the deity. So we don't know how it enters our own body, how would it fit in there. Um, then if we try to meditate in front, then it feels completely unrelated. How would that benefit me? So we face lots of problems, right? I so then we have all these commitments in Samayas that we have to follow and protect. So we have to do our daily prayers. If we don't do them, we are going we are told that we are going to go to hell. And so we absolutely have to do them, but we don't know how to do it. We don't really have even a wish to do it. We don't feel that they are so extremely precious because when we read the words, they don't really make sense to us. We don't really understand what it means. So if we don't do the prayers, we are so scared we are going to hell. If we do the prayers, we get angry because it doesn't make sense to us. So if we do, if we do like that, it's very difficult to generate realizations, right? So when we take a, an empowerment, it, it means that we get a permission to do this or that. So what are we uh, allowed to do through the empowerment? What do we get the permission to do through the empowerment? We get to uh, we get the permission to meditate on our own in pure body, speech, and mind, in the nature of uh, pure body, speech, and mind. So that's why we go through the process of the different stages of the empowerments. The, we take the bath empowerment, the wisdom empowerment, the word empowerment, etc. And so through these uh, different empowerments, we uh, kind of exchange our impure uh, mode of being to um, a, a pure mode of being. And so we reach out to the pure mode of being through the empowerment, and then slowly, as we get accustomed to this um, uh, kind of uh, pure uh, dimension, then we slowly grow or uh, get closer to the achievement of the two holy bodies of a Buddha, the, the Dharmakaya and the Rupakaya. <laughs> So that although, of course, if you don't know how to meditate, still you uh, generate, you accumulate so much merit. So I'm not completely uh, saying it's bad. So then, because of course the, the lamas are uh, giving this empowerment and they uh, clearly know the recipient of their empowerment, whether they are a suitable recipient or not. So the way they, their intention uh, in uh, granting these empowerments is that in, in these jitterbelly times, nowadays, um, when also all these sentient beings also have to achieve enlightenment. And so in order to 
establish a very stable, very deep connection with all the different disciples in order to be able to lead them properly to enlightenment. In the future, uh, the the lamas grant these empowerments with such such an attitude, such a uh, broad-minded intention. So, on one side, it's good to do one's best as much as we can to recite the mantras, to make offerings to the deities uh, or the Buddhas. Uh, to, and in this way, we can purify so much negative karma and we amass huge amounts of merit. <laughs> So some people stay in retreat and they have all kinds of weird experiences. Maybe they feel they see uh, the deity or they heard something strange or they have some signs or they have some good dreams or, you know, uh, different things happened. Um, but whatever, whatever kind of good things happen, if you really want to check if you um, have generated realizations or not, you have to check in what in what state are your self grasping and self cherishing attitude and if you witness that they have decreased, if you witness that through this uh, the, the fact that they have decreased then you, your mind is much uh, much more open, much more relaxed, you have more faith and then I, then you can see that you are getting clo closer to realizations. Uh, if you do not witness any of this uh, if these two are just as the same as before, then uh, even if you see the deity, even if you have this and that sign, even if you have dreams, you know, this doesn't mean anything, you know. What was the point of clinging to uh, the appearances in the dream? <laughs> uh, when we meditate, we like to do a uh, single pointed meditation, isn't it? So then we, uh, why are we saying that Kamubaiting is so precious? We say because it is extremely useful uh, when uh, put to use when uh, we meditate on renunciation uh, bodhicitta, emptiness, and the two stages of Tantra. Otherwise, if we don't do that, do that, and we just meditate on uh, common binding, um, then because we are continuously so busy with work and, and things like that, then um, being so busy, then our uh, physical constituents like uh, winds and uh, you know our our nervous system uh, get a bit disturbed. So through this meditation. Uh, we find more balance, so we become more relaxed, and also we find a bit of peace because our course of delusions won't have the opportunity to arise uh, during this meditation. And then, of course, if you're um, uh, um, a person who can recognize the uh, nature of the thusness of one's mind and you have a habit of um, seeing this or cultivating this, then it's another matter. 
Leg has hours in the to do Otherwise, if you just sit like this uh, without thinking about anything, what kind of karma are you accumulating? Most probably, you are accumulating karma to be born as an animal. <laughs> <laughs> Um, otherwise, uh, we should better try to uh, think about and uh, meditate on renunciation, bodhicitta, and the perfect view of emptiness, the different points of the labyrinth, the great path to enlightenment, and slowly, slowly <coughs> get, um, uh, cultivate a habit of those different points, uh, and then we will find that we can uh, find a true transformation in our minds. Uh, once you see and you meditate on the advantages of liberation, the drawbacks of samsara, you become um, a person that is kinder, more positive, more honest. You find ways to generate and grow your wisdom, your compassion. So in brief, whatever religion we might uh, follow, uh, whatever kind of person we might be, I think it's very important to never criticize anyone. And uh, we should uh, remember, remind ourselves that uh, ordinary people like us don't know where the Buddhists and the Bodhisattvas abide and who they are. So they most probably are everywhere. So we can, as we cannot recognize them, we should never see faults in others and never criticize others. If we want to search for faults, then the best place to do so <laughs> is our minds. <laughs> So today what I've been talking about is really just my own uh, uh, my own obscure opinion about that. So you don't have to believe anything at all. You can, you can just uh, investigate and check things out for yourself. If you find something beneficial in there, then that's uh, very nice. So you can just uh, investigate and see if there are things that make sense, if, if, there, uh, uh, if there are things that don't make sense. So see for yourself. That's the best way to proceed. So thank you for having uh, listen to my obscure uh, uh, explanation and opinion. So today, now I mean, time is uh, time is up. And yesterday I I took a little bit too long. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I would like to share with you my prayers and my hopes that for the rest of our lives we just uh, cultivate kinder attitude and more altruism. Let's do the dedication for it, huh? <laughs>
Thank you. 